Hey, I'm Chicken Linguini, and today I want to give you five easy hacks for stored fat and blood sugar control. Most of these hacks I learned from reading the book Glucose Revolution by Jessie and Chape. She also has her Instagram at Glucose Goddess, and it is a wonderful site for a lot of information on blood sugar control. And this is information great if you are diabetic or non diabetic. Your blood sugar and your glucose still is affected whether you have diabetes or not. It is something that it controls everybody and you'll be surprised of how much control it has over you until you start doing these hacks and you realize that you start feeling better and you're like, wow, I can't believe everything was controlled and linked to my glucose and my blood sugar. So. I definitely recommend reading the book, give her a follow on Instagram, and listen out for these five hacks. So the first one is my favorite one. It's the easiest one I found. It's to eat your greens first. So if you've been on my channel before, if you've read anything that I've written, I normally say to eat your greens first, and that's because if you eat your greens first, the fiber protects your intestine and it makes like a little mesh around your stomach so that everything that you eat after is easier for your body to digest. And that's because it takes your body longer, it's harder for your body to digest fiber. So if you eat it first, it takes your body longer to work on that, making the other foods like your carbs, your potatoes, your rice, your pasta, bread, all that good stuff, that's super easy for your body to digest because that's basically sugar. So the second you eat it, it gets absorbed into your blood very, very quickly and that results in a glucose spike and that happens if you're diabetic or not. Just because you're not diabetic doesn't mean you don't go through glucose spikes. So that happens when you eat carbs, especially carbs alone. So if you were to eat your greens first, the fiber in the greens, like I said, has like a little mesh, a barrier, and it makes it harder for your body to digest. So because it takes longer, by the time it gets to then you eat your protein, and then you eat your carbs, and even if you were to eat your carbs and your protein combined, it's still better when you eat your greens first. So that is my first life hack, easy hack for stored fat and glucose spikes or blood sugar control. So the second hack is to move after you eat. So we all know that it is great for us to move, that we need to be moving as humans, that we need movement and exercise for our optimal health. But now studies are showing that if you were to move and exercise after eating, it's even better because when you eat, you This is because when you eat, your cells get filled with the glucose, with the fuel from the food, and all the extra fuel normally just sits there and then needs to be redistrib redistributed, and that's what causes the spike and the stored fat. But if you were to move after you eat, and that's as simple as doing literally a 10-minute walk, your muscles need the glucose because you're you're moving them and you need to fuel them so instead of the glucose just sitting there and needing to be redistributed it's actually fueling your cells which is fueling your muscles so the stored so so you won't go into the stored fat mode you'll be using the glucose studies show that this can reduce your spike up to 30 percent which is pretty crazy so moving after you eat is amazing it's gonna be better than moving let's say first thing in the morning or you know not moving at all obviously so it could be as simple as a 10 minute walk it could be a couple of squats while you're watching tv but and it doesn't have to be directly after you eat although it can be but i know that we have heard from our grandmothers our wellas over many times that we can't do anything after that we eat we need to relax for at least an hour studies say that you can go and exercise 70 minutes up to 70 minutes after you eat so you can rest for your you know hour if you really need that full hour or you can rest for like 20 minutes 45 minutes and if you go within the 70 minute mark 
you will still help your glucose spike. You'll still help those cells instead of being redistributed as stored fat, you'll use them as, as fuel for your exercise. The third one is to eat a savory breakfast. So studies show that you can have both, let's say, a 300 calorie breakfast, both the exact amount of calories, same calories, but one being a savory breakfast and one being a sweet breakfast. So one being eggs with ham and butter, avocado, toast, the other being just cereal or a smoothie, a bagel, a croissant, anything that's basically just sugar or will turn into sugar in your body, toast with jelly, any type of sweet breakfast. And again, the same calories, so oats with fruit, a fruit smoothie, and again, 300 calories of the savory breakfast, you will have a smaller glucose spike with the savory breakfast. And again, if you glucose spike, you're storing fat. So if your goal is to get rid of stored fat and to lower your glucose spikes and to control your blood sugar, having a savory breakfast is the way to go. It also is the first thing that you eat in the morning, so it sets you up for the day. And some people don't eat breakfast, but breakfast is really anything that breaks your fast. So that can be in the morning as a typical breakfast, or if you are a person that intermittent fasts, that could be your noon lunch. That's still your breakfast, that's your first meal, and making it savory is the way to go. The fourth tip is to have your sweets after your meals. So that's pretty normal. We normally have dessert after our meals, but I mean this in regards to choosing to eat it literally after your meal rather than snacking a sweet snack. So I know it's very tempting because I have them here to just go into your cupboard, into your pantry and reach for something sweet. I have my chocolate covered almonds. I have a big sweet tooth and it's easy for me to just go in and reach them and grab a handful as a snack. But that is going to, that same amount of almonds and calories and chocolate is going to have a way worse effect on my body if I were to have it in the middle of the day with nothing in between rather than having it directly after my lunch or my dinner. And that's because, like I said in the first hack, which is to eat your greens first, that's the fiber is helping it out. It's slowing down the, the absorption and the digestion of everything. So by the time it gets to your sweets, by the time it gets to your dessert, it, it, it has been digesting for much longer and the sugars won't immediately affect you as opposed to you eating it in the middle of the day, in the afternoon, as a snack with nothing. There's no fiber there, there's no mesh, and you're just gonna immediately get the sugar into your system, you're gonna feel great for a little bit, and then you'll have that crash. And that's because the sugar immediately got absorbed into your body. So I'm not saying not to eat your sweets because like I said, I am a sweet tooth, and I have tried to cut sweets cold turkey, and it just never works. So I found the best way to do it is to just have it after dinner or after lunch. And the fifth tip is to have vinegar in a glass of water if you're going to have something sweet or something carby alone. So it happens when, I know I just said, make sure to eat your sweets after your dinner or lunch, but sometimes it happens when you're at a birthday party and you just have a slice of cake and there's nothing that you can do about it, or you're you know, in on the go, you're at the airport and there's nothing but a coffee shop and you get a bagel or a muffin for breakfast. Sometimes it happens. And the way to go about it to reduce your stored fat, to reduce your glucose spike and to control your blood sugar is to have vinegar in a glass of water alongside it. So I know it sounds kind of gross, but just put it in a tall glass of water, chug it down, and it'll help you the same way that fiber helps you. And this tip also goes hand in hand with walking after your meals. So if you're going to eat something like a slice of cake at a you know office party and you want the cake, there's no going around it, you haven't eaten lunch or it's been over an hour that you've had lunch, 
If you have the slice of cake and then you go up and down the stairs or walk around the building a few times, it'll help you just like having a tall glass of vinegar water will help you. And if you do both, it'll help you even more. And the tall glass of vinegar water is just a tablespoon of vinegar and you can use white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, whatever vinegar you prefer. You could put a squeeze of lemon if you prefer. I like to drink it in hot water. I like it more it reminds me of a tea so it's not as miserable so those are the five hacks that i have for you eat your greens first move after your meals eat a savory breakfast eat your sweets after lunch or dinner and have vinegar in a tall glass of water if there's no going around a cheat meal if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe i have new videos every thursday and shorts daily of my food recipes and what I eat.